Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Welcome to church on this Easter Sunday. You may have noticed the sanctuary is empty, but so is the grave on this day. And that's what we're celebrating, the, the risen Savior. We're glad that you're with us today to experience church with us this morning, uh, doing it again a little bit differently. But we are glorifying and praising God, and we're so glad that you are here to join us in this on this Easter Sunday. Welcome.
Good morning. It's Easter and he is risen. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you that you have overcome the evil of sin, paid the price for our sin forever by sending Jesus to die and then you raised him up again. Lord, thank you that we have now your righteousness and don't have to depend on our own. Thank you that Jesus reigns forever with you in heaven. Thank you for that grace and that love. Lord, today many are sick, they're scared, people are panicked, really worried about loved ones. We ask that you grant us your peace and your joy. Father, we long to have face-to-face -face fellowship with each other again. And what a glorious day that will be when that happens. But for now, Father, we ask that you help us to have fellowship as we are in our homes. Lord, many in this world don't have hope. Show us how to be salt and light in this strange world. Show us how we can serve others and serve you and how we can do that. Lord Jesus, because of your death and resurrection, we are Easter people. And we pray as you taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Jazz First family. I'm Jasmine Smothers. I can't believe it's been over 20 years since our family came to serve the Norcross Church. I now serve as the lead pastor at Atlanta First United Methodist Church in downtown Atlanta. And I'm so grateful to Pastor Eddie for the invitation to share the gospel with you this Easter Sunday. I'm reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw the two angels in white, standing where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned around and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. This is the word of God for God's people today. Thanks be to our almighty God. Happy Easter. Wow, it's a different Easter though, isn't it? A holy week has come and, and gone and we've uh, started it uh, on Palm Sunday. Totally different than anything I've ever experienced before. Uh, we had our, our communion service together via video. That was, that was different. That was interesting. And what a, a joy that was for me to be able to share that with each of you. We've had our, our Good Friday service. Um, again, totally different. Um, but what a couple of days it's been since then. And now here it is, Easter morning. Uh, missed a sunrise service. I've been doing that for several years. And so that was a little bit different. I remember growing up. And my mom always wanted to go to the, the sunrise service, and nobody wanted to get up and go, go with her. And uh, one year I said, I'll go with you, Mom. It rained like crazy. Uh, but that was Easter. That was memory. That was something that she enjoyed doing. And um, uh, 
uh, I would enjoy being able to do that with her. But So I have missed that. This week has been totally different. And if we're not careful when things are different, we get a little fragmented. We get a little uh, separated from what we're, what we're used to. Easter is one of those kinds of, of holidays because it is a, a holiday um, for, for our nation and around the world, but it's different because it is definitely the religious holiday that we celebrate. And it changes from year to year, different times of the year. Um, I don't like that. I wish it was the same all the time, but, you know, it's, it's been different, but it's still been, for me, it's been personal. And our scripture reading talks a little bit about, about that, and that's what I want to share with you today. We, you heard our scripture reading uh, from John 20 uh, today, and, and each gospel has a little bit different story, a little bit different way of how, how they wrote it. Uh, but I love John's gospel in it because it talks about how personal of this relationship it was for Mary. And so as we, we think about that, I hope that on this Easter Sunday you've been able to already been able to think about your personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, yes, Easter has been different. Yes, your Easter plans will be probably a little bit different this afternoon uh, than what you've ever had before. But still, we are called to have this personal relationship with Christ because it is personal. What Jesus did for us was personal. And he would do it again, even if you were the only person on this earth. So it is personal. So how have you encountered this personal king? You know, how have you encountered a, a risen king already today? Um, your traditions of Easter morning, I hope you're still able to do those things. But uh, how are you going to encounter Jesus today? As I sit in this, the sanctuary and think about this and think about Easter and how it is for me the the most important um, holiday is for me the, my, my favorite holiday because I get to think about the greatest gift ever given to us in Jesus Christ. I get to really think about everything that's happened in these last 40 days of, of Lent and leading up to now depending on the thing that I give up or the thing that I add for, for Lent. And it wasn't until this year, earlier in the year, preparing for this sermon already that I think about just how personal this is. If you remember the story, and we heard it earlier, Mary went to the, the tomb and she looked inside and she saw that it was, was empty except for, Scripture tells us, she did see that there were uh, bent over and looked into the tomb and she saw two angels in white and, and she became upset and they asked her why she was weeping. She said, they've taken my king, they've taken my savior, and I don't know where to find him. And, and when she stepped back out, she saw Jesus, but she didn't know it was Jesus. She thought it was the gardener. And it wasn't until Jesus said, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? That she realized after Jesus said her name, Mary, everything changed. It became personal. Jesus called her by name. And on this Easter Sunday, I hope that you can hear Jesus calling you by name. It's personal. Jesus met her right where she was. Jesus meets you right where you are. For Mary to be there at that moment and to think about everything that she must have experienced the last few days, wondering what was going to happen. See, we, we know the rest of the story. We know the, the good that Good Friday brought. We, we know Jesus' resurrection, what that means for each of us. We know about his life, his death, his resurrection. We know about him giving his life so that we could have life. We know personally about Jesus dying to give us abundant life. But for Mary, she was in a place where she'd never been before. She was in a place of, of disarray. She didn't know what was to come, what was to happen next. And Jesus calmly said, Mary. Hear Jesus calling your name. But where have you encountered Jesus? Where has Jesus met you? Maybe in this past week with, with Holy Week and things being so different and, and homeschooling. So many of you have become teachers and didn't even know it. Where has Jesus met you in that? Teaching your children, are you still making sure you're teaching them about Jesus? So when Jesus met Mary right where she was, it changed her life. It changed her life forever. It does the same for us. I think about Luke's gospel, the Emmaus encounter, the Emmaus story in Luke 24. 
And if you read that, you'll, you'll see where these two disciples had left Jerusalem after Jesus was crucified. And they were walking home, walking to Emmaus. And depending on the route, about seven miles or so, it would take them quite a while to, to get there. And as they're walking on the road, they're talking about everything that had happened. And Jesus appears out of nowhere with them. And they didn't know it was Jesus. And he's saying, what are you talking about? And so they're talking about things that had happened. And it, it kind of surprised them that this person didn't know what had happened in Jerusalem. And so they're telling them everything about Jesus, about his life, his death, his, his being crucified. And, and it wasn't until Jesus sat with them when they got to their home and they broke bread together that it was revealed that that's who was with them. It changed their lives. It became personal. The story in Luke tells us that they got right up and went all the way back to Jerusalem to, to tell the other disciples that Jesus was alive, that he had been resurrected. Each day that we wake up, we have an opportunity to, to experience Jesus. We have an opportunity every day that God gives us uh, to have this personal relationship with the Lord. We also have this opportunity, just as these two in the Emmaus story had, to tell others. I believe at Christmas and at Easter, unlike any other time of the year, people are more open to hearing about Jesus. And I think now with this virus, with everything going on, with all of us having to, to hunker down and stay indoors, you're going to have an opportunity to tell others about Jesus and what a difference he made in your life during this. The thing is, for it to become personal, it needs to be personal when you share it. We know of, the, uh, of Mary running back and telling the disciples that I have seen the Lord, she said. And if you remember, they didn't believe her. These were his followers. It hadn't become personal yet for them. It didn't become personal for them until Jesus met them again at the Sea of Galilee and they had a meal together. What's it going to take for you to have this deeper, closer, personal relationship with a risen Savior. Easter is such a wonderful day, such a, a, a beautiful day, whether it's raining or, or sunny, whether the pollen is, is crazy or not, but because it's, it's different. Something has changed, and we have this, this opportunity to get a little deeper, go a little further, to get in the trenches, to understand that Jesus died for us, but he also rose again for us. So tomorrow morning, it's Easter Monday, and we are Easter people. Easter Monday is a, is a huge day, is a vitally important day. So many times when things are normal, people go back to work, spring break is done, you go back to school, and we go about our lives again. Well, this year is different. How are you going to let your personal Christ rule your life? This, this personal risen king now in your life, how is it going to make a difference? Consider Mary. Consider the joy that she must have accepted and experienced right after a, a, a scary time, a, a uncertain time. We're kind of in uncertain times, but as I've said, we have a certain God. We go from highs and lows and ups and downs in, in everyday life sometimes. For some of you, this Easter season doesn't feel like Easter because of everything that's happened. So, so I want to invite you to get a little closer with God, to, to experience him in a, in a new way. For others of you, this has been the most exciting Easter ever because it's made you draw closer to each other, closer to God. And so this, this Sunday, this special day in the life of the church, in the life of the church worldwide, we are able to encounter Jesus. So I hope that you hear him call your name, to speak to you, to, to call you by name. And I hope sometime today, in, in, in some way, whether your house is full or, or if it's just yourself, to be able to sit, find your quiet place, pray, and hear God call you by name. To call your name, to say it's personal. I did this for you. What difference is that making in your life? Jesus meets you where you are. I, I don't know where you are right now. 
I don't know if you're closer to God than you've ever been in your life. I don't know if you're further away from God than you've ever been in your life. I don't know if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today would be a good day to do that. But I pray you understand, with God it is personal. It's the now what. Every year after Christmas, I do a sermon, and it's basically now what. Christmas has come and gone. We put the decorations away. Now what? Easter, Easter Sunday, Holy Week, all this week leading up to, to this moment. Tomorrow's going to come, but the, the now what happens? In the past, we've been able to answer that question going forward because it's a routine. We know what we're doing, but this year's different. So how's it going to be personal for you? I want to encourage you to get into some sort of Bible study. Don't let this Easter season come and go and you go back to normal because we're not in a normal place anymore. Get into some sort of online Bible study. Get into a, a, an online, a Zoom, a, a FaceTime, whatever you need to do, a small group of prayer partners. Don't let this Easter season end. If you participated in some sort of Lenten practice, you, you added something, you gave up something, don't go back. If you gave up sweets during the week, keep giving that up and trusting God in it. If you added Bible study, don't go back. Don't take that away. Continue to make it personal. This is your time with God. This is your relationship with Jesus, different than anybody else's. To make it personal means you've got to be invested. So I hope that you would continue to do some things that draw you closer. Get into the Bible, get into prayer, check on people, continue doing the things that you're doing. And remember how many times in this Easter story, when Jesus appeared to people one-on-one, -on -one, they knew it. It changed their lives. How has Jesus changed your life? Who can you share that with? If you're sitting around with your quarantined family and you're, you're stuck together in, in the house again for another day, look at it this day as somehow a resurrection kind of day and, and share your story with each other. There's a chance that you as parents have never told your children about how Jesus became real in your life. There's a chance they've never heard that. There, there's a chance your spouse hasn't heard that from you. Or maybe your mother or your father or Whoever's close to you, do they know your story? Do they know the personal relationship that you have with Christ? Today would be a great day to share that with others. And I thank my mom and dad for introducing me to Jesus at an early age. I'm grateful for the church that's been there for me from day one, my entire life. I get around and I say I've been Methodist my entire life except for a two-week period where I jumped over to the Baptist church for a couple of weeks. But I found my way back. I've been in the church my entire life. Easter is important. Easter is personal. How have you experienced this personal risen king today? I pray that you'll continue to grow in your faith. I pray that you won't let what's happening in the world keep you from that. I pray that you look for places to see where God has made things anew. Made things fresh. Made things different in a good way. Share your story. Make it personal with somebody else today. Let us pray. God, you know this story that's on our hearts, and I could go on and on and on on this Easter Sunday, but, but Lord, I believe that you're, you're calling families and you're calling people right now to, to continue this sermon in their homes. I pray, Lord, I feel your spirit saying it's time, Eddie, to, to hush up so you, God, could do the talking to these people. And so I just pray, Lord, that from going on from this moment on, we're, we're going to sing about how you live and how important that is in our lives. But, but, God, I just pray that this continues in the homes of your people today. And maybe for those who, who don't know you personally, maybe maybe on their knees, even by themselves in their own home, that they accept you into their hearts, into their lives as their king, as their savior. And so, Lord, I, I pray for those people right now. I, I pray this intercessory prayer for their souls, that, that they would accept you, that they would understand that it's personal, that you died for them. 
So Lord, I just pray that families all over, whoever's hearing this, watching this, uh, viewing this in any way, that they would consider how personal it is for them right now, that they would share their story with others, and that you would remind us and you would call us by name because God is personal and you love us. And we're so grateful. Thank you for this Easter Sunday. Thank you for the reminder of what Jesus means to each and every one of us. Thank you for being our king. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with you. He talks with you along life's narrow ways because for Jesus, it's personal. So may the, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the love of his son and our savior, Jesus Christ, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit go with you and be with you now and always. Amen.